That's the way Thunderbird calls it, is write instead of compose. That's just, and I like that too. Separator, don't need it. Reply to message, yep, we want that. Reply to all, I don't want that. Set, reply to sender, I don't want that. Forward, I do want. Separator, no. Trash, yes. Spam button, no. Separator, no. Delete, no. And I'm going to add one in. So, internal function, and I will add, where is it? The address book. Add. Okay. Now when I hit apply, I'll move this down so you can see it, these will change to this. Ta da. And you can change the uh, text to be on the right, and I'll show that in a moment. Message window, because there's three main windows here that have toolbars in them. The main, the message, when you're reading a message, and another window, and a compose window. So in the message window, reply to all, I don't need that. Separator, don't need that. Spam, don't need that. And don't need that. Compose window, send. Put into Q, Q folder, definitely don't need that. Save the draft, yes. Separator, no. Insert. Now there is a difference between insert file and attach file. I wouldn't even bother with insert. Keep attach. Don't do insert. Delete. No separator. And the address book. And apply. Alright, so now we're down to the plugins area. GPG, you don't have to mess with that. Now you can, in the HTML viewer, automatically load remote images. I wouldn't do that because uh, that can present a little bit of a security risk. So I would keep that unchecked. You may want to optionally also not clear the image cache on exit, although I do. And you can manually do it from here too. Isn't that cool? Like in an email client, you can just clear out a very specific type of cache, that being images. That's why clause is awesome. Okay, now for the notification plugin. Now this one, you actually can select the parent menu because it's technically under plugins so, and there is settings there. Okay, include folder types. Mail, news, RSS, calendar. You can leave that as is. Now, the banner. Okay, what is the banner? The banner, if I set it to always and apply, see this? Actually, I'll make it a different color so you can really see it. Let me apply that first. Okay, we'll do always, custom. Yeah, you'll really see this. No, because it's black. Let's try reversing that. Make it black and make this yellow and apply. Oh, there you go. Now you can really see it. Now what this does, which is actually pretty sweet, is when a new mail comes in, this thing appears. And then it shows you what you have in your inbox for new mail instead of a toaster pop-up. Or you can have both. So the best way to use this if you opt to do it is to have it as only when not empty and apply that. When a new mail comes in the banner will show up and it is clickable and you can go right to your mail. It's pretty nice actually. You can make it sticky or non-sticky which just means if it stays there or not and you definitely want include unread mails and banner so you can actually see a little summary of them. Now I'm not going to enable this but that is kind of a cool option. The pop-up I believe means, yeah it is uh, the toaster pop-up, meaning something that pops up right here. I'm not going to bother with that, but if you did you can say, okay, how long do you want the pop-up to show up? Do you want it to only scan for very specific folders? You get to choose your folders here. Like just say the inbox and nothing else, you could do that. There's sticky options here too, and you can use custom colors as well. For command probably don't need to mess with that unless you really know what you're doing. The one that most of you would be interested in setting is the sys tray icon. Now if you enable it, see down here, if you hover over it, it gives you some information. You can uh, close to tray, meaning when you hit the close button it will actually just minimize. Hide when iconified, what that means is when you minimize it will not show up in the task, uh, the larger task area and only show up here. And to um, and to note, yes, the icon will change when there is new mail. So you can't do it like that. Probably the one most of you would choose to go with is just this setup. Enable and hide when iconified. And I'll show that, uh, how that works in a minute. Under miscellaneous, uh, 
is there anything here I need to show? Probably just this one. If uh, you're using this to synchronize mail and that's really important to you, you want this checked to synchronize offline folders as soon as possible. And I'll show the offline stuff in a moment. And then there's logging, which I will leave as is, and apply, and OK. Now to show that little tray icon thing, if I just minimize this, oops, hold on one second. Oh, I don't know if the setting took. Let me go back and check. Close the tray, hide when iconified. Let me try it with close the tray. That should do it. Alright, close. Yeah, there we go. It's still running, but it's not showing up here, but it is here. And I just click once and it comes back. So that's how that works. Alright, now we move on to appearance. Yeah, I know, eventually we're going to get to sending and receiving some mail here. So, <laughs> so anyway, view, show or hide, toolbar. Text beside icons, icons only, text only, or hide. If I do text only, it shows like that, old school. Or the way I like to do it is text beside icons, so it looks like this. And in, let's see, now the message view, you'll notice that it's just the letter key V. So V, that's what that does. This is actually a search field, and I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so set displayed columns either in the folder list or the message list. This is the folder list. This is the message list. So I'll mess with the folder list first. And the only one I want to see is the total messages and not new or unread. So remove this, remove this. You can actually put the total before the folder name if you want to, which is kind of neat. But anyway, I'll just keep it like this and hit OK. So now the only number counting going on there, let me just minimize this, make it look a little pretty. There we go. Right. Yeah, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else I have to show before I actually send a message here. I don't believe so. I think I covered everything. No, I didn't. Um, I didn't cover the folder stuff first. Now, if you right click a folder and you go to properties, and this could be for any folder in this list, and well, why do I have a sent items folder? Oh, I know why, because Fastmail uses the uh, a folder called sent items for sent mail. Well, this is actually good because that means I can go, I can correct a mistake. <laughs> this is good to show because it could happen. Configuration, edit accounts, edit, advanced, put sent mail in, sent items, OK, apply, OK, close, and do a quick restart of the client. Why is it still showing the sent? Oh, that's weird. Let's try that again. Put send messages and sent items. I should be able to safely delete the sent folder. Oh, maybe I can't. Hmm, I'll have to check that later. Maybe it's a fast mail thing. I don't know. Most of the time it is called sent. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Right click properties. Okay, now if you want to synchronize mail for offline use, this is where you do it right here. That is how it's done. It can apply to subfolders also and it's per folder specific as you notice. It's always there but you have to do each one like that. And to answer another question for email nuts out there, how does clause mail store mail? Mail dir format which is beautiful. It does not use that single file crapola. Mail is stored via individual EML files, which makes it easy to back up. And I might as well show that where fat uh, excuse me, where clause stores mail. So we'll do a start and a run and percent a p p d a t a percent which is an environment variable for application data and you'll see clause mail is one of them open it up 
and one of the folders is IMAP cache and there is this is where it is and you'll see the folder there inbox and there's all the stuff and when I put in some messages they will show up here they don't have .eml extensions they're just raw numbered files based on the message number on the mail server but they are EMLs which is cool which means that any attachment that's inside the email is stored within the individual file stupidly easy to back up okay enough of that let's send a freaking mail right write a new message and I will write it to myself put subject line test from clause mail test from clause mail send sent put in the sent items folder check the inbox and check yahoo I got my mail alright and reply now you'll notice this is where I can show the template in action okay now notice that it did insert my signature when I went to configuration preferences templates I started my cursor here put my signature there and when I reply it will put my cursor here it will uh, insert this text which is my signature and this which is from to subject date in my format and the quoted message with this uh, greater than symbol as the quotation mark so reply and that is exactly what shows up cursor position at the top little signature I put in here the uh, from to subject date in my format and the quoted message test reply send check oh I should note that too. I'm glad I just saw that. Now by default, um, oh yeah, this is actually a really important point. <laughs> God, I would have kicked myself if I didn't mention this. There's two things Clause has configured by default that um, may be annoying for some people. The first is that it actually does show mail in a threaded view. Now you can get rid of this by doing view and sort is it under sort no it's not I do know the keystroke for it though it's control T T is in uh, tango so control T and it gets rid of it like that and you do have to do that for you know each folder control T now if you want to sort mail uh, from the top being the newest and the bottom being the oldest this is the way I recommend doing it now, like Thunderbird, uh, Clause Mail does not understand emails that do not have a date header in them. A website that sends emails without date headers, and I can't stand it that they do this, is YouTube. YouTube will does not include a date header in any email they send, and it wreaks havoc with email clients like this and Thunderbird. But this is how you do it in Clause Mail to overcome that. We do view sort by number and then view sort uh, I think it's descending actually yeah okay so view sort and just make sure it's by number descending and it will show the newest mail on the top right and that's the way it does it now as far as these messages are concerned I said that they are stored in a specific location so if you're the type of person that likes to back up your mail show that all right so we'll go to the application data folder percent app data and percent into clause mail view details make it a little smaller a little easier uh, where's IMAP cache there it is IMAP cache view details mail messaging it automatically names the folder whatever the incoming server name is if there are two accounts where the incoming mail server number is this n <laughs> mail server number incoming mail server is the same it will just say the same server and a one or a two after it 